All right. So, man, just uh, glad to have all you guys here. Like I said, uh, as I know, there'll be a few more guys jump on and join us. So I'm going to give a quick commercial, then I'll introduce this morning's speaker and uh, jump in. Hey, guys, just wanted to uh, let you guys know that starting next week, starting next week, we're going to start dropping uh, all our content from Men of Valor Conference 2021. So uh, over the next 12 weeks, what we're going to do, we're going to be dropping one either main session or one breakout session on our YouTube channel, making it public for the next 12 weeks. And that'll run us all the way to the end of the year. And then Lord willing, first of the year, we're going to be announced, start announcing our speaker lineup for 2022. So, uh, so hey, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you go subscribe to that so you can catch those uh, when they go live. Like I said, so starting next week, probably end of the week, uh, since we have Man Up Monday, we'll be dropping those. We'll be dropping one a week for the next 12 weeks. That'd, so that'll be all eight of our breakout sessions and all four of our main sessions will go public over then. So uh, make sure you're following our YouTube channel. Also, um, if you are get remind text messages, you can join our remind reminders and we'll be sending out those links there. We send a reminder every single week on Sunday evening uh, here, America on America Sunday, uh, we send out a remind message reminding you of Man Up Monday. And to join that, simply just text the at sign Men of Valor, at sign Men of Valor to 81010, and you can join that text message. Like I said, we only send out one a week, usually at the most two texts a week. So it ain't like we're gonna blow you up. And it's not a group text, so you won't get caught up in one of those where it just, all you'll get is whatever we send out. Uh, but we send out reminders and things like that. And we'll be sending that out every week as well when we drop those sessions. So just a couple of quick reminders. And uh, hey, if you haven't got registered for 2022, you can do that over at our website, menofvalorconference.org. And there'll be a little bit more about that at the end of today. So uh, guys, it's so good to have my friend Kenny Sexton joining us today. He's going to be bringing the word here in just a moment, uh, but he uh, he's becoming a dear friend to me as we've just kind of, man, just God just kind of crossed our paths uh, a couple months ago and man, just got to know him and uh, he's actually uh, st stuck his toes in the water with us with Gaborum and SoulCon last challenge. So I got to jump on and make sure he's going to jump in again with us on October the 11th. Uh, so, hey, if you haven't took a SoulCon challenge, make sure you jump in. And uh, if you got any questions about that, you can hit us up. They're a dear friend, partner uh, ministry with us. But uh, he, he's a pastor friend down at Satilla Baptist Church down in South Georgia. And I can't wait to hear what God's put on his heart. So let me pray for us. And then after I pray, Kenny, man, you unmute and just bring whatever God's put on your heart. Let's pray together, man. Father, we love you. We're just so thankful that you love us. Thankful for another morning or afternoon, no matter where we're at, just to gather here and to get in your word. That's the most important thing. It's not about a time zone. It's not about any man here on this call, but it's all about Jesus. And this morning, just pray that our hearts be open, that we'd be challenged from your word. Just be with Kenny, may his lips of clay be a mouthpiece from heaven today. And God, just speak to us in Jesus name. Amen. Well, gentlemen, it's uh, so, so good, and I'm honored to be here with you today uh, to bring a word. I've got one verse of scripture that I want us to look at this morning, actually a couple of them, but just one main key text, uh, Romans 12, 2 is where, where I'm going to just uh, speak from. You know that one by heart. Uh, you, you probably had this one memorized when you came to Christ or started reading the Bible, but before we get there, just kind of let me give some intro stuff to this. Uh, Billy Graham has said, being a Christian is more than just an instantaneous conversion. It is a daily process whereby you grow to be more and more like Christ. Uh, there's been one thing in this Romans 12 too has really been, been hitting me because if I think about that, that quote that Billy Graham has said, it's a daily process, a daily process of where I become more and more and more like him. Uh, if I look at if I look at training, I mean, like right now, I've got I've got a, a grandpa bod, okay. So, so somebody may have a dad bod, and you're trying to get out of that. Uh, but I mean, I, I, that's that's where I am. And, and if, but if I train, and I'm and I'm going to look at at some kind of different sculpting of my body, I've got to train. I've got, and I'm going to become more and more, and I'm going to look more and more like what I'm trying to sculpt my body to look like. Now, I can't make my legs get bigger. I've got chicken legs, so that, that's I've tried everything, Eric, to try to make that better, but that just hadn't worked yet. I, and, and so if I showed you, you would you know, but I'm, I'm going to spare everybody from that this morning, this early. But man, listen, here's what's been permeated in my mind is this, listen, you know, how do I, how do I, how do I not conform to this world? 
Because that's exactly what Romans uh, 12, 2 says. Listen, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I've, I've really been, been man, that, that thing is the, the word transformed, be transformed. Don't conform to this world, but be transformed. Now, it gives you the formula right there. He says by the renewing of your mind. Um, I, I know this full well because uh, back in the day, um, several years ago, I started training for triathlons and I started working. Man, I, man, I was, you know, I was doing two a days, uh, some brick workouts. And so man, I get up in the morning, I'm in the pool at 4 a.m. I, I get out of the pool after swimming for about an hour, hour and a half. And then I would go get on the bike and ride 25 miles or I'd go run nine, 10 miles before I go to work. I'd get through. I'd come back. But I remember my very, very first, my very, very first half marathon. And I mean, I trained really good for it. I, I got going really well. And next thing you know, man, I, I know what it's like to hit the wall. And so, I mean, I was clipping right along. I've got a picture of myself. Man, I'm like I'm in, a, I'm in some type of a pageant vehicle waving at the crowd, man. I'm just, I'm just, hey, hey, everybody. Hey, how's it going? Man, I'm, I'm clipping right along. This is mile number three. If I wish they would have got a picture about mile nine because the wheels came off the bus, man. I'm like, oh, but everything in the mind was telling me, Kenny, you can't get there. You can't get there. I, mean, I only had 4.1 miles left and everybody over beside me was running off to the side to throw up and do this. But man, my mind was playing just tricks with me going, man, you can't finish this thing. You got, you got to stop. And I'm huffing and puffing. I'm trying to just get another step in front of there just to finish. But I, I'd, I'd gotten to a pack that ran about a good almost minute pace better than what I'd trained for. And so, but I know what it's like for that mind. So, hey, don't be conformed world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I had to train my mind to overcome my body. And, and, and now I've, I've just gotten into the place where, hey, listen, my mind is strong, but my body's weak. So I've got to get back into my training. But how do we spiritually speak and how do we move from a from habitual anger? How do we move from habitual impatience? or even rage to becoming uh, someone that lives in a posture of peace? How, how, do we, how do we move from someone who maybe struggles with pornography or, or lust or, or, or something like that, that that's a, that's a, just a, the devil has a stronghold in, to someone who can live in freedom with their thought life and their sex life? How about somebody who is maybe self-centered, uh, somebody that's selfish, that really moves into a place where they realize they're in a bigger story. Um, they, they realize that there's a grander narrative, that there's, that there's someone who finally realizes that, man, there's something to living this life, loving others, and wanting to see a world that can be renewed. Where well, Romans 12, 2 is that, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We have the word of God. We have, we have, a, we have a, an entire copy of the word that, that's a beautiful story. It is a love story. It's, it's something where God has come. So have we bought into this lie that information equals transformation? Like I can get up in the morning. I can be on this Zoom call. Man, I'm looking forward to it on Monday mornings, and, and I'm, I'm excited. I mean, it can be different time zones. I've got different people, different nationalities, different walks of life, and I'm coming here. I'm looking at this, and, and man, I, then as soon as I, I click off this Zoom call, I can walk right out. And I've gained nothing more than just information. Because, man, hey, knowledge is power, isn't it? The knowledge is power. But if I bought into that lie that, man, listen, information equals transformation, but that's, that's not the key. I can, I can really memorize a lot of scriptures. I can have some passages. I can talk the language. I can have language. But, man, my life reflects nothing that I've been transformed by the power of, of a resurrected Christ. Right. I mean, how am I living into the power that really I get from scripture and that becomes uh, from being transformed by my mind? Because now everything inside of my life, inside coming out my life to, to be on display with everybody else is a, a life that's been transformed by the power of God. Brandon Cook says it well. He says we can actually talk about scripture as a way of avoiding transformation. Now, think about that. We can actually talk about scripture as a way of avoiding transformation. Man, guys, listen, this is, man, we get to a small group, we get to it like we call it a D group. Um, we can get in some of those groups and say, okay, um, we can talk about scripture all day, but it's only when we get into James so chapter five, verse six, where you confess your sins to one another and you pray for one another so that you may be healed. So, so do we go into those spaces to go, man, hey guys, man, I'm struggling with this. Hey, can we pray that I can be healed? I mean, that, that, that's a life that's transformed. You realize that there's things in my life that I've got to get, I've got to get right with the Lord. 
or it, it maybe it's the Bible studies. I mean, I, I know the women uh, for years, man, I've, as I've been leading in, in this church ministry life for so long, man, we'd have a group going through a Beth Moore study. I mean, they, they, they're looking for the next Beth Moore study. So they get to about week number six or seven. Their, their prototypical question is, hey, what are we studying next? Right. I'm not knocking on the ladies, but it's been, but you're always looking, hey, what's the next study? What's the next study? What's the next study? But what about going to more conferences? How about reading uh, more books or how about just studying more? But what we realize in First Corinthians 8, 1 says that, man, knowledge puffs up. But listen, it says, but love builds up. How, are we living into a transformed life to where we're loving others? in a way that God loves them, but we've been transformed. Well, wow, when I looked at this, I, I, I thought about this life. When we've decided that we're going to deny ourselves, we're going to pick up a cross and follow him. Okay, when we're going to look at that life, and we're going to be transformed by the power of him, we realize that trusting him means that we surrender what we can't control. Now, think about that. When, when, when we finally trust him, then we realize that we surrender what we can't control. You and I, if we had a sheet of paper in front of us, we would realize that there's very few things in this life we can control. But the things that we can control comes from within. It's an attitude. It, it, it's how we pro really project ourselves to other people. I mean, do we really love people? Do we really exercise grace? I mean, I can control that, but I can't control what others are doing or what others are saying. But, man, I, I'm, I'm finally giving everything to God what I cannot control because, listen, he is the one who is in control anyway. So what I realize is that, listen, I've got to, I can't conform to this world. I've got to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I'm reminded of 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in life, in one's possessions is not from the Father, but it's from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away, but the one who does the will of the Father remains forever. Man, you, you guys would agree, man, there's so much eye candy out there for us, isn't there? I mean, if we're not very careful in this world, we have to combat that every single day that, man, our eyes are attracted to the world versus really the, attracted to things that God has really been teaching us. If we have information, we can get lost in that. And say, so, man, okay, it's just information. Well, I kind of know this over here, but man, I'm living in the world. I mean, I've got my eyes all attracted to something. I've got my pride of my possessions in there. But what I realize is this, we have to live, once we become a Christ follower, once we love Jesus, we have to shift from what, I, what we call a human paradigm to a Jesus paradigm. And let me, let me tell you what that, that means, okay? And then this, I think, kind of give us a, a little context for it. In a human paradigm, we, we grow up in a system like, hey, man, pull, pull everything up by your bootstraps, man. Just, just, you can do this. Man, it's kind of like this, this uh, self-will, self-help type deal. Well, you've got this X that's out here that you've got a goal that's out here, and you're, you're out there trying to get to that X. You're working your way toward that X. But guess what happens? When you get toward that X, the X keeps moving. It's elusive. It, it just it goes from one spot to the next spot. And then you get to that one, then it get, goes. I mean, it's just like you've been taught, hey, what's this American dream? What's the American dream, man? Nice house, a white picket fence, or hey, I've got this big boat, or I've got this family. We, I mean, there's all these things that we have is, is, is been told, but it's this human paradigm. And what we've done with this X, once we've come to Christ, is we've taken that X and we've just turned it ever so slightly to look like this. Now, all of a sudden, in our spiritual life, it's about arriving. It's about getting toward that. So we're working toward those things. But, man, listen, we know that we don't work for our salvation, but we work. Man, our, our work and our salvation really comes in a place where we have these habits. We have diff a different lifestyle. Uh, we're living for him. And, man, people, man, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, right? And so instead of, instead of arriving, in that word of human paradigm, we have to shift into what's called a Jesus paradigm. And what the word in the Jesus paradigm is simply this, abiding. Abiding. So how every single Monday morning that I've been on this particular Zoom call, we have been taking a short amount of time, first thing on Monday morning, to abide, to just sit. But how, how do we do that? I mean, we, we've got to make sure we're committed. We, we get up and do those things. But man, again, is it information or is it transformation? 
And so we get it. We, we, we reflect on it because, man, the flesh, the, the flesh wants us to look at all these other things, man. It's just, just like you said, you're living in the world. We're in this human paradigm. We got to keep keep fighting that human paradigm. And, and, and we see that throughout Scripture, especially in Paul's writings. But, you know, the, 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 the really the flesh, man, there's these desires, these, these sinful desires that we've had. But, man, as we're being transformed, man, we should sin less. Not that we're sinless, but we should sin less. And so we're, we're looking at those things. Listen, food is good. Everybody here would say hey, food is good. But when it's taken to the extreme, it's, it's a sin, Right. Uh, there's there's other things that are really good that God has given us, but listen, if it's taken to an extreme, it's bad. But man, he tells us in Galatians two twenty, I've been crucified with Christ, and I I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. We have the power within us, right? The dunamis, that 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 dynamite. We get that word that man, this spirit that lives in us is man the same power that rose Christ from the grave. We have these eyes. That, that, that has a sinful desire, if, if we're not very careful, to look at possessions, to look what we see, the visualness of everything that's appealing to us, which can mean money, possessions, or physical things. But man, he says, listen, that the, these things are going to fade away. They're, they're, they're going to go. He also says in, in, in James, and our, our church has been studying this over the last, uh, probably going through this since, since uh, June. Which side are we going to decide that we're going to live on to be transformed by him? Are we going to say, listen, I'm going to be a friend with the world? Because he says, listen, if you're going to be a friend of the world, you're an enemy of me. Right? And so by, by living living for the world and, and, and saying, listen, I'm, I'm going to live in what, what John said here, a lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, lust of pride. Man, if, if you're going to do those things, then, then you're a friend of the world. You're an enemy of me. So have you been transformed? by the renewing of your mind. And so you got to get in these things. Listen, you don't want to become stained by the world. You want to, you want to live a life that this, this living for other people, that this being, you know, selfless, that, that this one that really says, Hey God, I want you to do everything that, that, that you can, man, to keep transforming my life so I can live for others. I can love them in the way that you want me to love them. We've got to be uh, transformed by the renewing of mind. Don't be conformed because this world is an enemy of God. Now, he sent his son into the world. He said, for God to love the world, he gave his only son. Listen, why? Because eternal life, man, believe in him, trust him, follow him. You have eternal life. We can have eternal life, but man, as we're in, we're not of this world. We're transformed. We look different. We're set apart. But boy, I tell you what, advertisements and TV and social media, it's got so much eye candy that kind of grabs us because we're guys, we're visual people. But listen, we can't. We can't keep up with the Joneses. We can't do all these things. Man, listen, our goal is what? Hebrews 12, to keeping our eyes on Jesus, who is the, the, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Man, listen, because he went to the cross for you and for me. Do not be conformed to this world. It's a world system. Man, it's, it's, it's just, again, I said this from from very early age in those formative years, what do we learn? We learn so much about this world system. I've got to go to first grade to do all these things to check the box so I can get to second grade. And then I do all these things to get to third grade. And then I've got to pass these tests uh, in, in fifth and sixth grade so I can go on, right? And so here we go. It's a world system that we're inundated with. And I heard this stat once upon a time, and these stats are going to change because social media has become so prevalent. Where do you get your information, the word or the world? It, you realize if, that if you're an average television watcher, by the time you reach the age of 65, you'll spend nine and a half years in front of the television set. Man, that, that, that's like big emoji eyes, right? I mean, I'm talking about big emoji eyes. If you're just an average television watcher, and I'm not talking to any guys here today that's an average television watcher because you guys work out, but you're about business and I don't miss it for God. But listen, if you're an average church attender, average church attender, by the time you reach age 65, you will spend four months in the Word. And think about that. Nine and a half years, four months. Talk about division. Talk about anger. Talk about hate. Talk about those things inside. And man, we can say we're cross followers, but hey, listen, are we have we conformed or are we transformed? Right? The the human paradigm says this question, ask this question, but it's really one of those things that uh, it's not a bad question, it's just not a complete question. 
It says, God, how am I doing? Well, that, that's kind of that arriving type question, isn't it? I'm trying to get to that edge, man. God, how am I doing? But if we're, if we're really transformed, we're asking these questions. Here's, here's two other, I think, better questions. God, how can you be so good? Man, you've, you've adopted me as your son. You've been so good to me in spite of everything that's gone on, man. I may have struggled with some things. I may have had a sickness. I may have experienced death with some folks that I love. But in, in spite of all that, God, how can you be so good to me? And then here's the second question. How am I loving others? How am I loving others? Man, if, if we look at those two questions, I mean, you're really going to see a life that's either conformed or a life that's transformed, right? And so in that, I thought about, man, okay, so how do we, how do we really get down to some of this stuff? Because I think I'm going to I'm gonna land on a Dallas Willard quote in just a second. But how do we get to this to where we say, okay, I, I really realize that this is a space that I can get into to where my life can be transformed and I'm not just kind of getting more information. He's given us some disciplines. Jesus taught us some disciplines. He taught us how to pray. I mean, the, the, you know, the disciples didn't say, Lord, teach us how to preach. They, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. I mean, if, if we were to show, show hands in here this morning, how many of you think, man, you've got this prayer thing down, right? But, but Lord, teach me how to pray, right? This, this one. But I, I thought about this, man, disciplines. When we talk about things like, hey, gratitude, or hey, how about forgiveness? How about fasting? prayer, scripture reading, a Sabbath. I thought about the word unhurriedness. I mean, Jesus was, was always busy, but never in a hurry. Think about that. He had a full day. Jesus was, was man, busy, but he was never in a hurry. Because here's what I've realized about unhurriedness. If you're always in a hurry, you can never be fully present. Okay? Hey, hey. Chief, uh, chief among sinners. Hey, my kids were there. Guess what we did when we got the bath time? Man, it was a race to get to bed. Like, how quick can we get a bath? I mean, I'm talking about, hey, when dad does it, he gets them and he dips them in the water, man, and drives them off and gets them in the bed. Hurry, we got to get back. Hurry, 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 hurry. Everything was about being in a hurry. In my life, man, hurry, get to bed. Instead of being fully present, when, 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 when our daughters want to go, hey, dad, 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 I want this. I want, man. Hey, but and, and, and just want to talk and give those words. Man, I'm, I'm like dipping them in the, in the bathtub and let's, let's get in the bed real quick. Hurry. Unhurriedness, a discipline. How about the people that, that you get behind when they're really slow going down the road? What comes to your mind? Did you immediately go into rant mode? Get out of my way, you slow poke. Get out, man. I mean, whew, man, I got to go drive around people, you know, because my life's more important, right? Have you really gotten to the line that had about like 19 people in it at Walmart lately? Just so, just because you just want to be unhurried. You just I mean, to teach you something. I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I, I'm learning these things about, about unhurried. Just, just, but I realized that, man, if my life is hurried, I mean, gentlemen, hey, listen, I'm going to live a life that is, that is never fully present. And I think what I want to do, because I, I'm reminded of, of Jesus when he's walking down the road, man, he's, he's heading his way and blind Bartimaeus is on the side of the road. And man, he, he's known, but, but man, Jesus and all, man, all the mass of people that was with him and, and how busy he was or how, how I mean, just all the stuff he had to do. He was, he was on mission and the disciples trying to quiet him down. Jesus turned around and stopped and gave him his full attention. And he also gave him what he needed was a healing. He, he just wanted to see. And so if we're, if we're, if we're always in a hurry, we can never be fully present. I want to land on this Dallas Willard quote this morning that I think speaks to a transformed life. He says, we do not become able to obey by trying to obey, but by becoming the kind of person who, had, who naturally does obey. I'm going to read that one more time. We do not become able to obey by trying to obey, but by becoming the kind of person who naturally does obey. We have to get into a space through our prayer time, our daily reading time, to where we're unhurried and we're silent and we're able to listen to him so he can transform us, man, from the inside out. It's a renewing of our mind because the world has programmed our mind a certain way that we've got to now de detox, de deconstruct and reconstruct a mindset that says, listen, 
I want to be that kind of person that does obey. I heard this story of a gentleman who said, man, listen, him and his wife had a spat. They, they, had, they had a little disagreement, you know, and, um, and, and he, he, he was wrong in what he said. But here's his response. When he shared the story, we thought, man, he's going to, he knows he's wrong. So he's going to go back and he's going to apologize to his wife because he was wrong. Well, you know what his response was? He went to his room and he prayed and he said, God, would you make me into the man that would never respond like that? I thought that was a, that was a, that was a great illustration instead of automatically going to say, Hey, honey, I'm sorry. Even, and, and he did that, but his first response was, I'm going to go pray that God, would you take that out of me, that you transform me in such a way that I would never respond that way. I thought, and man, I, th I thought that was so good. Man, may we be somebody, may we be that person to where we would be the kind of person who naturally obeys Christ. May we be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We have to combat this whole thing every single day of being conformed to this world. Let's live in a Jesus paradigm where, where we abide in him instead of trying to be always hurried and, and, and never fully present. Man, Kenny, what a great word this morning, my brother. What a great word. And man, so, so much right there. Uh, my little notepad was getting full here. But man, you, you said something back when you was talking about <clears throat> the ladies' Bible studies. And let's just be honest, men do it too. Uh, where we're going next, what we're going to look at next, what, what, what are we going to do? And if we're not taking it and applying it, uh, then we're, we're just wasting our time. But I, I had this thought when you said it, because how many times do we hear people say, you know, I want to go deeper. I want to get deeper. I want to, I want to, I want to get deeper in the theology and nothing wrong with that. But I, I wrote this statement down. It's just what I thought when Kenny was talking about that. I said, we will want to go deep sometimes so we don't have to go across the street. Because we can say, well, I got to study. I, I got to dig in more. I got to get more of this. And it's keeping us from doing what Jesus has called us to do in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, where he said, go. Matthew 8. I mean, he said, go, therefore. Go, go, make disciples. And, and we will use the, I want to go deep. And it will keep us from doing what God has called us to do. So, uh, man, let, let's apply it, right? Uh, just got back from the beach. And, you know, if we wouldn't use sunscreen, uh, on my children, my children would have come back burnt and we could have had all the bottles of sunscreen we wanted in the bag, but if we wouldn't have applied it and put it on them and constantly applied it when, when, you know, when, when it started wearing off, uh, then they'd have come back burnt, but they didn't because we applied what we had available to us. And, uh, so guys, I want to challenge you the word you heard today from Kenny, the word you heard from your pastor yesterday, uh, at your church service, don't just take it and hear it and say, amen. So that was a good word, but let's take it and apply it to our lives, set our minds towards Christ. Uh, Kenny shared the scripture, you know, keeping our eyes on Jesus, um, the author and the finisher of our faith. So man, Kenny, thank you for the great word this morning. We're right on time. Uh, so, uh, guys, just one quick, uh, commercial one more time just before we go hey don't forget uh, you can go to our website and you can get some of our mob swag we still got some hats left uh we got our, our will fight bracelets coming out of nehemiah 414 if you like some of those we also got some of our t-shirts we are a 501c3 nonprofit, so every penny that you have it don't go to pay nobody nobody gets paid to do anything we do our executive team uh, all the money goes 100 back into the ministry uh, so we're able to, to do things like this with you. And then of course, to, to help pay for our conference, our speakers and band and everything we have to do is everything has cost, right? Uh, so to do ministry, it takes money. Also, uh, if you'd like to be a partner with us, you can do that on our website as well. You can partner with us. Like I said, we're a 501c3. So if you're a small business or anything, uh, looking to partner with a ministry, we'd love to have you come alongside us as we, uh, man, go after Jesus and go after men to challenge them to go out and be the men of God that he's called them to be. So, uh, like I said, you can check all that out, menofvalorconference.org. And if you got any questions, you can feel free to hit me up, uh, Facebook, Gaborum app. Or if you got uh, my email, you can email me at eric at Gaborum, uh, dot com, and we can uh, get you any information about that. So, guys, it's right on time, 6 a.m., so let me pray over you and go out and light it up for the king this week. Father, we love you. We're just so thankful that you love us. And just so thankful for the, what we heard this morning. And God, may we go out and apply everything that we heard. May we uh, 
not just go through the motions. May we not uh, be conformed, as our main text this morning, to this world. But may we truly be transformed by applying your word and allowing you to change us. And may we go out and make much of Jesus in our daily walk with our families, with our co-workers, with every person we come in contact with, with every opportunity that you give us. May we let your light shine through us. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, men. Hey, if you're live with us, there's a lot of prayer requests today in the chat. I'll leave the chat. I'll leave uh, the chat up for about a couple of minutes so you can go through and pray over those. But love you, men, and we'll see everybody next Monday.